let me start out by introducing myself for some of you that are new or just watching for the first time. My name is Danny Garola with Stampin' the Pink Barn. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the USA, specifically Tucson, Arizona. It has been really dry and windy the last couple of days here and warm. We've been like mid 80s, a couple of days it was up in, you know, I just think they could be a train. Yeah, that's true. It's been, you know, sometimes mid 90s or uh, lower 90s on a couple of days, but it's just been so crazy dry here. I, I just, I don't understand, you know, everybody else is having snow and rain. And if that's you, get a big industrial fan. I want you to go down to Home Depot right now. Get a couple of industrial fans, plug them in like an outside outlet and blow that business this way. Just saying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We just so need rain, snow. I mean, I'll even take snow at this point. Just some kind of moisture on the ground. All right. So before we get into making the card, I want you to know that today is the last day for um, Last Chance products. They are retiring. The catalog ends tonight. I believe the um, order ordering from the previous annual catalog, the 20, uh, 2020, 2021 catalog ends tonight at midnight. And that would be mountain time, not my time. Cause I'm mountain standard time. So they're even an hour difference than me. Um, which is crazy cause they're kind of just right up from us, but we're the only weirdo state that doesn't have, um, like daylight savings and all that kind of stuff. We just stay the way it is, which it's kind of nice. Cause then I don't have to worry about time changing and messing with my sleeping pattern because whew, I know how that was crazy on the kids when they were, you know, younger. Um, also, oh my gosh. Okay. With knowing that the retiring is coming to an end, that means our new catalog starts tomorrow. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, boy. I hope you guys all have your catalogs. If you don't, please email me. I put the email in the description of this live video here, or you can just Facebook message me. That's probably the easiest and fastest way for me to see it. Um, and then I will get those catalogs right out to you. Um, and on Thursday, the 6th, I will be doing a catalog kickoff here on Facebook Live, Mount, or 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So come join in some fun and stamping, and we're gonna have some giveaways. And I'm gonna make some cards with some of the new product. They're kind of cool. I've been, you know, messing around with new product and coming up with some ideas for you guys so I can show you some new fun things. All right, and speaking of giveaways, we have the giveaway from last week's Fun Day Monday. It is, ah, uh, where did I put it? For the Mother's Day cards. That's right, these cards right here. Miss Lorian Taylor, you get to pick from, and I know they're backwards to you, this is using that uh, what, uh, flowers for every season, I believe it's called, the DSP. That is on that retiring list as well. So here's the one that are in, and they also use the 2020, or what are they called? The 2020-2022 in colors. This is the Cinnamon Cider with the Just Jade. That's that ha Happy Mother's Day card. Uh, we did the Magenta Madness Happy Mother's Day card with the matching envelopes, of course. Here's the Misty Moonlight. Oops, I have it upside down. Sorry, that really screwed you guys up. <laughs> Bad enough that it's backwards, but you don't need to be upside down as well. So that's the Misty Moonlight. And here's the Bumblebee. This was the different pattern one that I did. All right, 
So you have to choose from one of those four and you could go ahead and just let me know which one you choose. So you could just go ahead and tell me one of those colors and I will definitely get that in the mail to you tomorrow as long as you let me know tonight. Uh, so yeah. Also, uh, what else did I need to go over? And so, how you enter those giveaways, I do it every week. So the card that I make, the cards that I make tonight, you will be entered in a giveaway. For next week, I announce the winner. So the way you do that is interacting with me, commenting. I see you guys already popping comments in there. You know, your name pops up in the comments, you get entered. So that's one way of doing it. Also, hitting those hearts and hitting those likes, that helps me so much with Facebook algorithm. And, you know, starting, you know, your own little business like I'm doing, I need all the help that I can get. And you as my viewers and my customers, you know, word of mouth is great. And there you go. Thank you for those hearts. And the most important thing is the sharing button. And I know it's a little bit fiddly on Facebook Live, but just hit post and then, um, or share, and then go to post. You don't need to write anything in there. But when you share this post or this feed that's running right now, you can do it later on, you can do it now, but as long as you share it, it goes on your Facebook um, news feed. So any of the people who follow you and that kind of stuff, they will see this pop up. If they want to, you know, watch the video, they can then take it, you know, on their own and watch the video. But those family and friends who are, are seeing this and decide to watch may pop up in our comments one of these days and you could have a family or friend, you know, one of your mem uh, family members pop in here and start commenting. So that's kind of cool to just keep our our people all together here. Um, so the cards that we are making today are, we're going to be using up that DSP. And I know I've got a bunch of DSP that has been from either, uh, we did, um, the celebrations. I know celebrations had some DSP. Uh, we also had, you know, just the DSP from the retiring catalog. So hi, Patty. It's kind of nice to use some of that paper up because myself I can be completely honest with you I am a paper hoarder it's an addiction just saying <laughs> so I need to get that paper used up so I don't feel guilty about buying new paper in DSP in the, the upcoming catalog because you know we all kind of feel guilty when we look down and we have a pile of paper and then to think of spending money on more paper it's it's kind of I mean if you're like me just saying also, you will find all the recipes for these cards that I'm making and the ingredients over on my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.blogspot.com. They will be up tomorrow. I let you guys know on this face or over on our group page, which is Pink Barn Stampers Group. I post over there and I let you know. I even put the uh, blog information in there once I post uh, the cards from tonight or any of our nights. It's normally I do it on a Tuesday because it takes me time to take photos and editing and da 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 da, -da to get uh, all, I mean, blogging is not an easy thing. I mean, it kind of is once you get the hang of it, but there's a lot of details behind blogging <laughs> I, who would have thunk not me but I'm in it so I do it and it does take me a little bit of time so like I said I let you guys know that so if you're not a part of the pink stampers group please go over and hit that join button um, I will certainly let you in all I ask is that we don't talk politics and that you be kind to one another because we have people who share their projects and you know what? We all need a little bit of encouragement and I encourage you to share your crafts over there. They don't have to be stamping up. I don't care what your crafting, you know, preferences. Share your pictures. We all, you know, like a little bit of inspiration from time to time. 
speaking of inspirations, wait till I get you guys flipped around here. I have done a thing to my desktop because remember how I was telling you guys that with the black desk that I have, there's an awful black, back, bad glare that the light creates on it. So I'm hoping I solve the problem by doing what I did. So let me get you guys flipped around so we can get to what you guys came here for. And that's the stamping, not to hear me chatter. Okay, hold on, close your eyes so you don't get sick. Look at that! Is that not cool? That wood grain that I've done. I love it. And hopefully today, you guys will have to yell at me if I am too far down. I'm going to try, maybe if I lift this thing up a little bit, that will give me more room to kind of play around because that's the edge of my desk right there. All right. So let me move this thing down so you guys can see everything. Get everything centered and situated here. This is the new May host code. It's also over on the blog. It's on that right hand column. I put May's host code up there. I do that and I also put this in every one of my current upcoming uh, blog posts. So then all you have to do is copy and paste this and put it right in when you're doing your uh, shopping. And I guess, I don't know because I don't shop the way that you guys do as customers. I guess they've changed things around the way that you put the host code in. It's not at the end of the order anymore, like down at the bottom after you hit like that checkout button. I guess it's at the top now. So keep watch for that. Just kind of an FYI. Okay. Batters up. This is the new paper pumpkin. Great way of kind of getting your feet wet if you're new to stamping. This is your one shop or one stop shop. Well, that's a tongue twister kind of box. Um, it comes with your stamp, your little uh, ink pad. It comes with an exclusive stamp set. This one is actually coming with a couple of sticks of bubble gum to give you that nostalgic feel of when you used to have those uh, do, 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 baseball cards. And you know how it used to have, well, I never had baseball cards. Let me just be honest with you. I had garbage pail kids. I don't know if you guys know what those are. I'm pretty sure you do because I think everybody on the planet knew what garbage pail kids were. They were these disgusting looking cards. I mean, they're worth some money now, but there were these cards that looked like little Cabbage Patch Kids, but they were all distorted and had funky names and, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. But they also had a piece of bubble gum in them as well. So this is also already posted over on the blog. This runs through May 10th that you can get your hands on it. It is a paper pumpkin subscription. So it will come to you monthly. You can pick and choose which boxes you want. So say you see this and you're like, eh, no, I don't do, I don't know anybody who plays baseball, don't know nothing about it. You can cancel that month's box. You don't have to have that kit. So I want people to know that so you don't feel like you're locked into something. You can pause your subscription from month to month if you want. If you see kind of the theme of what's going on, you know, I, I know that's a real thing. <laughs> no, the gum did not taste like garbage, but thanks though. <laughs> that would have been gross, but it would have kind of, um, they also have these things, they're called the bean, bean, jelly bean bin boozled or something like that which kind of reminds me of that because there are these jelly beans that was a challenge that my kids played it when they were little or, but they were, gar they were jelly beans, like jelly belly jelly beans. And they had them in, one was like vomit flavor. One was grass flavor. One was soap flavor. Um, one was dog food flavor. I mean, and they were the grossest thing on earth you got one of those bad ones because they had like the green grass on it. I mean, it's kind of silly, but the green grass wasn't really that bad to chew on. It kind of tasted okay. I know that sounds super silly. Um, the, what was the other one? Vomit was gross. It, I mean, it is the way it sounds. It, 
they and they truly taste horrendous. The dog food one, I probably have to say, was the worst one by far. It truly, when you open a can of dog food, and maybe not all of you think that it smells gross, but trust me, it tastes like turd. And I, I don't eat turds, but just saying. <laughs> okay, so that's Paper Pumpkin. You can subscribe to that on uh, the Facebook page. I have Watch for That Baseball Batter Up heading, and right below that. I did try, I, did, I don't know if I tried them all, but I do know that I did try some of them because I would sit down and they would be like, mom, come on, play with us. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can. I might throw up. And then that would be really bad because my kids are those kids that once they see somebody else throw up, then they're doing it too. And I was not getting into that mess. So I told them, I go, as soon as I get the first gross one, I'm done playing. Well, lo and behold, I would get a an okay one, even the soap. <laughs> I know that sounds super funny. But but in this day and age when you're worrying about kids eating Tide Pods, but when when you get the soap one and then you get a dog food one, the soap one doesn't really taste that bad. I mean, being in that generation that if my, you know, grandparents or I don't know if my mom ever did it though, but my grandparents, if you said a cuss word, they would shove a bar of soap in your mouth. So as a kid, you always thought you were slick and got away with like saying a cuss word because I'd be talking with my cousins and stuff and they were all boys. So I had to be cool just like the, you know, the cousin, bo the boy cousins. So I would say a word and lo and behold, I always got caught by grandma or grandpa. It just, it never failed. Okay. So this is a piece of, where are my cards so I can even see what I'm doing here. All right. So we're going to be using up some of that DSP on with my my stories so I don't sit here all night long and talk your ear off. I do have some news for you guys though, which is kind of stupid news, but whatever. This is a piece of old olive and it is eight and a half by five and a half. I didn't score it, I just folded it, which you just saw me do, but that's scored at four and a quarter, eight and a half. I am using the Ornate Garden Specialty designer series paper it is the one with all those flowers i think this was discounted at a really good price um but some of these papers have some of this beautiful well that one doesn't but some of them have this beautiful gold foiling on the flip side look at that that is that old olive but with that gold foiling this one so you guys can still get this I didn't check to see if it was available, but if it is available, you guys can still get this through midnight mountain time. This one is just some white with that foil, but the coolest thing that I've seen some of the other demonstrators and, and uh, card makers do is they color these in with different colors and then they make their own DSP. All right, so there's those. What else do I have here? There's that one in that Rococo Rose which I love saying that because then I get it stuck in your guys' heads. I know Patty said that she was walking around saying it. Oh, there's that one too. That's mint macaron with the gold. So yeah, really pretty paper. So we're going to play with some of this today. I'm also going to be using the, did I not grab it? Oh yeah. This is the ornate styles. So FYI, we have three different ornate things going on as of midnight tonight. This one will be retiring. And so will the ornate borders uh, dies here. Now, we still have the ornate layers and the ornate frames that are going to that continued over into the new catalog. But this one is being retired. I'm showing this to you because this is the first time I've played with it. I stare at it all the time and I'm like, hmm, how am I going to mess with that? But I'm going to show you tonight how I mess with it. All right, I'm going to grab this little border piece right here and we're going to use it. <clears throat> and the other thing is, is if you see this thing, am I still in frame? If you see this little weird thing and you're like, what is that? It actually cuts out the... Is it this? Oh yeah, it goes this way. I have that upside down. 
it cuts out the one side of this. So say if this was to cut, cut out, you can put this piece down on something and then cut the edge out of like the other side of the paper. And then over there, you're going to see it. So then when this folds over, it'll fold over. So you see exactly that edge, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's move that. We're going to use this one. I am using, okay, stay there. Maybe I need to move this fan. I am going to come in with this paper right here. So with all of our designer series paper, it's double sided, right? You guys know that. And if you don't, you do now. All right, this I'm cutting at five and a quarter by four. Now watch when you see how easy and how this gets your paper used. You're gonna be huh, making cards like a crazy woman. All right, so I'm just gonna move this over to about the, let's say one and a half mark, which I know one and a half is right on my line here. Am I still in frame? Right here on this mark, I know is one and a half. So if I just take my corner of my paper up here and put it on the one and a half, then I know I've got enough of a gap here. I need to make sure I line this bottom corner in my, uh, my groove and make sure your cutting blade is way out of sight because we don't want to mess with that or screw our paper up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the scoring blade and using a scoring blade on your DSP, DSP you need to go very lightly because otherwise DSP is not thick like cardstock and you will tear right through it. And we're not trying to cut this. We're only trying to put a little bit of a groove in there so we can fold that up. So not sure if you can see, well, I don't think I did it that time. I think I was a little too light on that one. No, no. Yes, I was. Make up your mind. Okay. So what we're going to do with that, so I ran the line all the way down. I'm going to now come in here and take this and I'm going to fold that little piece all the way up like that. Okay. So now you see both pieces, both sides of our DSP. And then I'm going to take the bone folder and make sure that's straight. Now look what this is going to do. This is going to go on our card just like that. Just a cool little neat fold that's kind of different. But first, let's come in with our, you know what, I'm just going to, no, I'm not. I was going to say, I'm just going to grab the big boss, but I'm not, I'm going to grab the mini boss because the big one just kind of takes up too much crazy room and we can just do it this way. And I'm sorry that that was a loud smack on there. Okay, I cut a, what was this? Three-eighths piece of paper of my gold foil. And I'm going to just lay this on there. I guess I better do that first so I can make sure I get it straight. I need to grab some of my, well, I did have, oh, there's my washi tape. I'm just gonna washi tape that down so I make sure it doesn't shift in my cutter. Okay, just like that. Well, maybe make sure it stays down there. Okay, grab my other plate and stick on top. Okay, I need new washi tape. That's not cut yet. Where's my washi tape? Oh, where, oh, where is the washi tape? Really? Oh my goodness. I don't know where my washi tape went. I've always had it up there and now it's not there. Of course, when I need it, it's not there. Isn't that how life goes? All right, let's try to get this thing even Steven, because it is not wanting to stay taped. 
So let's just get this on here. Ugh, that's not gonna work. All right, hold on. I gotta grab some washi tape or actually I'm just gonna grab this and hope that it doesn't. I'm gonna stick it on my hand a couple of times to get a little bit of my skin oils on there because otherwise we'll be waiting here all night for me to get this thing taped down. All right. One more piece. I can't believe my washi tape is gone. I wonder if it fell back behind my desk when I was moving stuff around. Because that's a real thing that can happen. All right, now well, let's try this again. All right, it looks like that is going to work. All right, let's put this in here. Maybe. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, we got it. All right. There we go. That took a lot of struggle that it shouldn't have, but it's done and it is what it is. All right. Let's get this piece off of here. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of bits, or maybe you can't see, but there's a whole bunch of little bits of my piece in here. And so, see all those little pieces on there to get rid of those off of here? Hula! Who would have thunk that happens, huh? Just go like that, drop it, and all those little pieces will come out. And there you go. And then those just wipe right off of there. All right, let's get those out of the way. And then what we need to do with this is grab my paper snips. And this, oh my goodness gracious, this fan is kind of being a turd today, is just cut because this die is technically meant for, um, making sure your paper is either the same length of the die or uh, shorter or you can do like what I'm doing and cut because we don't need the whole thing anyways because my card's not that long all right where did my there it is my, so this is going to get laid right on the edge of that just like that but first let me take a glue dot or snot dot whatever you choose to call it and I'm just gonna push that one piece down just like that because I still want this to be kind of open so it looks like it's a pretty cool fold um, I opened a new glue today but I just want to show you guys kind of something that I do now, it's completely up to you whether or not you find this purposeful or not. But I always keep one of these little push pin little doohickey things and I just keep it underneath that wrapper because I don't hardly ever open this end and it, you, it's in between the wrapper so you're not going to get poked with it. But that way, if your end ever gets dried up inside of there which I use mine too much and it doesn't get dried up but every once in a while I'll get a gooby and I just can't get that sucker out of there so it's kind of good for when you get your little goobies it kind of helps with that so let me get a piece of scratch paper here so I can put my line of glue so I don't get it all over my new desk covering you know, the funny thing is, this is actually wallpaper. It's a self-adhesived wallpaper. But it works. And you can re, it's like re-sticky, so once you use it, if you want to take it off of wherever you had it, it's kind of for, I guess, like apartment complexes is what kind of one of the descriptions is, because when you're living in an apartment, it's not yours, it's... You can't put anything permanent on the walls. 
So it's kind of cool that you could put this on this. It almost looks like kind of a shiplap wood grain. They actually all did a floor in this as well. Okay, so I'm just going to put that on there so you see that. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut. Use my edge of my DSP. Oh, so my story. Um, what was it? Thursday, I believe. Me and my mom were going to head to Costco. So... I knew that my husband worked late that day. So I called my mom and I was like, hey mom, I need you to come over to the house at about 7.30 in the morning and I we can go to Costco together, but I need to take my son to school first because since his dad worked either, I don't know if he worked earlier or later or whatever, that he couldn't take him to school, so I had to take him. So I told her, I said, or maybe he was off that day. I don't even remember, but anyways, on with the point of what I'm getting at here he uh I go to take my son to school and I drop him off which is like I had said be, uh, that I've said many times he's like 45 minutes to an hour south of us as if you're going towards like Green Valley as if you're going towards Mexico so I uh we get up or my mom comes over here she's here on time we go to take him to school let me get a sentiment here so with this we can pretty much put any sentiment just something that is going to fit in that area what's the other oh here's a card that's the other one that I had brought out or I had which one did I use for that oops sorry didn't mean to bump you guys I have this one I was gonna put the sending healing hugs because not sure if you know anybody who's going through kind of a hard time with health or because of this corona crap going around which okay that's not gonna fit there so that's what you have to watch for depending on how high you bring this and how far you move it is gonna determine what kind of stamp you can put in there um I think maybe we might use this happy birthday or we can use this happy birthday let's see what one fits in there better so anyways, I, we take him down to school. We get back. We, okay, that one's going to work good. We go to go back to, uh, it was too early for Costco because Costco didn't open until like 10 o'clock or something like that. So we head back up north into Tucson and we're piddling around. I think we stopped and did a couple of things that were open early. Maybe we even stopped and grabbed something to eat. I really don't remember. And then I, I stop and I get gas right before we get ready to go to Costco. All right, I'm going to put this right there. Ooh, my light just fluctuated just like that. All right, so um, I stop and I get gas. And as I'm pulling into the gas station, my phone rings. Well, it's my son. Okay, wait a minute. He's supposed to be at school. And at this time, it's probably about 10.30, 11 o'clock. Um, because we had... Oh, we went to Tuesday morning. That's right. We went to Tuesday morning because we get this syrup stuff that they carry there for our coffee. All right. And then I'm just going to put that paper on there. So, uh, like I said, we're heading to Costco. We're stopping to get gas. The phone rings. My son tells me, Mom, I need you to come get me. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And he said, he goes, well... I've been in close contact apparently with somebody who had COVID or has COVID or tested positive for COVID or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, why are you calling me number one? Why is your school not calling me? If they need me to come pick you up, you know, wouldn't a teacher or a principal or a, a, a nurse or somebody be, I go, let me talk to somebody. Like I need to talk to somebody who's a teacher, who's authority figure here. Not to say that my son didn't know what he was talking about, but nonetheless, I mean, he's still a 15 year old punk kid. So I said, I need to talk to some. So I guess there was a, an aide standing there. And so the aide got on the phone with me and she had said that, yes, they had been in close contact with somebody with COVID and I need to come pick him up ASAP. Well, I, you know, let her know that 
I'm still like an hour away from picking him up. Okay, I'm gonna take one of those there and I'm gonna take another one. These are the gilded gems and I'm gonna put one kind of right in that little fold there. So I, I we, I told my mom, I go, I, you know, it really sucks. We're not going to be able to go to Costco. I have to go pick up Corbin. And she's like, you know, absolutely. Let's go get him. So we head down, pick him up. And I, I walk into the office of the, um, he was off. Um, I go into the office to pick him up and I, I walk up to the office and I said, you know, I'm here to pick up my son. Um, I guess he's in that crowd that they were exposed to somebody with COVID. Well, the guy at the desk looks at me and says, I don't know anything about that. Oh, oh, okay. You're sitting at the front desk. How do you not know what's going on here? He said, he goes, they're all out by the gate. If that's what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> so I, I kind of turn around and I said, I go, Oh, Andre was off work. That's right. Um, so I, I, I go to walk outside. Well, I can see Corbin. So I turned around and I asked the guy, I said, I go, so how does this all work? And he goes, honestly, he goes, I don't know anything. He goes, there's a note in your son's backpack that will tell you everything that's going on. Mm, okay. So I get in the car. I, I noticed Corbin's already walked out. He's already saw that the car's there. All right. So that's our first card. Isn't that so cool to use your paper up? And then you kind of can, you know, base it on whatever color you like. I just liked it because of the old olive in this I thought it really kind of drew that out and then you get the old olive that's up in here as well so that's our first card all right on with our second card I'm also going to be using that paper again actually you know what I'm going to show you this card but I'm going to make that one in a minute because this other one's really kind of cool that I really want to get to it all right so this is a piece of very vanilla eight and a half by five and a half we're going to then fold it or score it at the four and a quarter so yeah so i turn around i'm like all right these people obviously don't have a freaking clue what they're doing so i go out to the car corbin's waiting for me my mom's sitting out in the car i told corbin i said i go can i see the letter that's in your backpack and so he kind of just like hands it to me and I hand it to my mom since I now have to drive and get out of this parking lot. So I hand her the letter. She starts reading it. She tells me that, oh, somebody's going to be getting a hold of me and he's able to come back to school on Monday. So I'm thinking, well, what the heck? Monday, if he's been exposed, don't you have to be in a 14 day quarantine? Well, come to find out he was exposed back on April 22nd. What? And you're just now, because I guess the person who actually had it didn't test positive until after, but that person knew that they were exposed. So what a cluster F. I mean, <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? I just thought, holy Mary mother, what is, how does this all work? Why are schools even open? They, you can't run, you know, what's going on here. All right. So this I cut at four again, and then I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter. Yeah. I was so, oh, and even my son says, he goes, mom, he goes, that was the biggest joke I've ever seen. He said, he goes, it was the most unorganized thing. So they had been sitting there since, like I said, I dropped him off at about uh, eight o'clock. Um, Cause school starts at like eight 30 and I didn't get down there until probably about 12, 12 30. Well, they made the kids, these kids that have all been exposed, sit on the outside of the cafeteria, but the cafeteria is kind of an open area. They made them sit out there, but wouldn't feed them lunch. So these kids had to sit there. Some of those kids, actually Corbin told me that one of the kids, his mom called and kind of went off on the school about the way that they handled things. But, uh, so this is five and a quarter. So we know that two and a half would be half of five. So this needs, to, if that's five and a quarter, then we need to go to one, two, three, four, five, five eighths. Okay, and then we're going to take our scoring blade, and since we have numbers over here, 
I'm going to stand up so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get kind of loud. I'll kind of hush up a little bit here. And then I'm going to go down to my one and a half mark, which is right here. So I'm going to take my scoring blade. And since there's a little line on my, or not scoring, my cutting blade, I can see exactly where I need to stop on the numbers here. So I know one and a half is right here. So I'm just going to pull this down to one and a half and stop. Okay. And then I know that my paper is cut where I need it in that middle. And so, um, I, he told me that his friend's mom kind of called the school and really lit it up. She was, she was mad that the fact that her son had to sit there all day because she couldn't get out of work. She was, you know, at work, her son doesn't drive. He's sophomore, freshman, whatever around Corbin's age group. All right, so you can either score this or just fold it as I'm doing. I'm just gonna fold it. My first card I scored, but I don't think that's necessary. But I'm gonna show you how cool this card is. Okay, so this is called a collar fold and I'll show you why in just a second. This is gonna go on here, but see that beautiful foil? We're gonna add a foil piece underneath here, but I'm going to run this through our Tasteful Textures, our Tasteful Textiles, uh, whatever this thing is, embossing folder, my goodness. Words are hard, words are very hard. Okay, where? Maybe I'm going to wrap through here because now I don't know where the heck my... Oh, she's sitting right in front of my face. Oh, my goodness. Heesh. Words are hard. Just finding things is hard. It's just... It's Monday. Yep. Okay. I'm going to run that through the embossing folder. And look what we have. We have a stuck piece of paper. This is two by five and a quarter because I know that since we cut to one and a half, I wanted to be able to have that, make sure that's tucked inside of there. All right, and for some reason, this card base looks funky, so I have to fix that because I don't like it. Okay, so this we know is gonna line up there. So let's take this piece and glue it to this. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and go down my edges and just a little bit in, just like that. So yeah, so the whole thing was just, eesh, my goodness. So every day since then, I have gotten a phone call from Pima County Health Department. And they are relentless. I get it. They have a job. They know what they have to do. My niece got tested because they thought she had been exposed to someone at a nursing home. Oh, wow. Um, 14 days later, she got a letter stating that she had COVID. She had been working all the time. Oh, my goodness. And see, and that's the scary thing is to think that until, I mean, until you get a positive test, you're still you know, exposing everybody else. And that's what scared the heck out of me because my mom had went and picked him up a couple of times. I mean, my mom is extremely careful, don't get me wrong, because she knows we've already all had it. We had it over Christmas. And my stepdad has had the COVID shot. So, but she hasn't. So we need to be really careful around my mom. But my mom is also very careful about, you know, she takes wipes with her everywhere she goes. She wears a mask everywhere she goes. And we all wear masks. Don't get me wrong. It's not just her. We all wear masks. We all, <clears throat> I mean, I don't go as far as wearing gloves and touching everything. But I mean, we when we get back in the car after touching a shopping cart or anything like that, we make sure we sanitize our hands really well. So, you know, we try to do what we can do. And, you know, obviously when you use the restroom, you wash your hands. I don't care if you have COVID or not. You just do that anyways. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just what I think. But not to say that everybody does the same thing. Um, so, yeah. So I was, my mom just kind of sat there and she's like, oh my gosh, I've been driving him to school. You know, not every day, but every once in a while she would run down there and pick him up from school. And so, you know, it, it's, it's kind of crazy. 
and and see and that's actually one of our people who come on here um the one that actually just won the cars she had just told me that she had the shot and tested positive after having the shot and it's like wow that's you know that's kind of scary crazy i don't you know, they, the health department keeps trying to push me to have Corbin get the shot. But I said, just until today, did I just see that Pfizer is actually letting kids under the age of 16 or up, I think it's 12 now is what the age that they dropped it down to. But before they weren't letting kids get the vaccination unless you were 16 and older. And even at that, if they were under 18, they still had to have a parent, uh, 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 sign for it okay so there's our card I don't have that glued down yet because we're going to do some other shenanigans here I think um, I think I did it in white that's right I didn't like it on the okay so I'm going to take a white scrap and I'm going to cut maybe doing that at an angle so I don't whack the camera and then I'm gonna see if I can fit my paper hoarder that I am see if I can fit my small one on there all right and that worked so let me grab one more piece of white to do I don't think that's gonna work that's not big enough oh heck I'm just gonna use this it doesn't even matter me and my picky self Okay. All right. Let go. Let go. Oh, okay. I'll get that out of there later. Um, and I need a piece of, since we have this bumblebee in here, I need bumblebee to do another one of my flowers. Jeez. I'm all over the place. All right. Where did I put? There it is. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take a little bit of glue and put in here and then take this one and put it like that. Ooh, I'm very shaky today. Hmm. And I only had one cup of coffee. Maybe that's why I'm shaky. Normally I have two or three, so maybe my body's like, whoa, what are you doing, lady? You need coffee. All right, now I'm gonna take these two and put them together. So again, this was the bumblebee. And if you look on one side, it has more of like a rough edge, kind of like a card base when I tell you guys that there's an inside and an outside to a card base. Punches kind of do the same thing. There's a good side and there's a bad side. And not that it's bad, but I mean. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of bend these up a little bit to make it look kind of real-er, if that's a word. Oh, and I have to tell you, Frida, I was so pleased and it touched my heart that you guys did what you did at your establishment that you work at. That you guys all came in on your day, or not all of you, but some of you chose to come in on your days off and fix the landscaping since you guys don't have landscaping service right now because of COVID. I just thought that was so cool and so touching that you would do that on your day off. So kudos to you and your fellow as long as it wasn't that snotty girl that you'd have to deal with. All right, I'm going to put this right down in the middle of this. Just like that. Isn't that so cute? My little daisy. All right, and then we're going to put that after I get this glue down.
Okay, and then I'm going to take another one of those Gilded Gems. And because I have the gold going on here and here, I kind of thought that looked pretty to just kind of accent that. And then I'm going to move that over about right there and put that on this card. And I'm not going to put a sentiment on the outside because I think we have enough elements going on that we can say what we need to say. We don't always have to have a saying on the outside of our cards. I mean, not that I have to tell you guys that, but we have enough going on here. Okay, so the reason why this is called a collar fold is now watch. And I know the opening is here, but I'm not using it for this purpose, but I want to show you the orientation that if we had a card that opened this way, look at that. Doesn't that look like a little shirt collar with like, you know, an undershirt and then this could be possibly skin colored or whatever. But and then this is like their little uh brooch or necklace or whatever and that is kind of off centered, but it works. So isn't that so cute? It's so neat to do these in like men's cards and do the orientation where it would open this way and up to do this in like a men's card for Father's Day, hint, hint, which is coming up and do some manly paper and then not even put a embellishment like this, but even just put your stamped image right here. Like say you had an old classic car or a pair of cowboy boots stamp set or something and then you put it on an oval on your dsp that's here because like i said since our dsp is double-sided how cool would that be and then just do whatever you want to do back here you could do either a gold or a solid piece which is what i'm going to show you on this one i made i'm not going to make this one today but i just wanted to show you another variation of this because i'm going to make the other one that's kind of with the same paper just to show you because it was really cool but I also took this card and I spun, so uh, just like the one we did here, it is that landscape, but instead of doing it just on straight, the same colored cardstock, I put another piece of cardstock down here. Now, what you could do is you could take whatever color here, because this matched this, and you can emboss this piece with some emboss an embossing folder, and then take your sentiment, instead of stamping it right on this paper, use just a little uh, sentiment label that we have, like even the mini, mini messages. You know how we have this one that cuts out all those sentiments at one time? This is a really cool one. And now that you guys have the new catalog, you see why I kept dropping the hints that this is an excellent set to have. This was in the, I think this is in the JJ Mini catalog, so this is still going. But this is carrying over into the annual catalog, but there's a new stamp set that coordinates with this die. So see all these little sentiment pieces? And even if you don't want to stamp these, you can cut these out all at one time and then use different stamps that you want to fit in there. Like some of these from Here's a Card. This long piece would fit like in here. So you can take this and just stamp it once you get it already done. So just to let you know, but that's those mini mates. But you could take one of those, like even say this one right here, and just stick it once you already have that embossed. So kind of another idea on how to use some of this stuff up. So that's another one that I made. Okay, so that's the collar fold I wanted to show you, but we're doing it in this orientation. The company was upset that we should not have volunteered. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever happened to chivalry? I mean, is chivalry dead? But no, because obviously you guys just did what you did. Oh my goodness. I just don't understand sometimes. All right, let me get those cards out of the way. And then what we're going to make is we're gonna grab another piece of that very vanilla. And wait a minute, did I get enough paper out? Hold on, hold on a minute. Cause I think I need to get another piece of, what was I using? All right, hold on. I mean, we can use any of these to be honest with you. It doesn't have to be that one, but, oh, they, no, that's not big enough. All right, maybe I'm not gonna make, oh, there it is. I was gonna say. 
and I've bought a couple packs of this, so just because it's not in here doesn't mean that I don't have another pack that I could pull out as well. Because, again, I can't resist a sale, so I look at this paper and I knew that it, I think this one was on sale too. So, again, I had to buy another pack of it. Alright, let's get that out of the way. Alright, this piece, again, is going to be five and a quarter. By four all right again we're going to take this and just turn it on its side there and put that in that piece and I'm gonna go a little bit bigger this time or actually I almost messed up <laughs> I guess I need to look at my card that I already did over here because I'm doing that all wrong Okay, we're gonna go this way. So, work with me here. All right, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in here. I know I'm gonna go about, you know, a third of the way up. I'm not gonna go quite half, so maybe about a th two, no, third, something like that. Doesn't matter, you put it wherever you want. I went a little bit over my one and a half mark and then lightly push that so I don't tear my paper. I loved because you guys know how I have such a problem using my very vanilla because I could never really find much to match very vanilla so I found my paper that I love with this colored cardstock and I need to start using up my very vanilla because I do have a lot of it and it needs to be used so now I'm gonna take this piece and pull this up and even though there's a lot of white in here, I think that very vanilla really looks good with this here on this background. I think, I think it goes. And even with the white, it's still okay. Okay, so let me put a snot dot. And I know I'm sticking with kind of one paper on you guys here. And even though I was trying to show you guys a paper user, it was just because it's easier if I just pull out one paper. That's why I wanted to show you. Here's this. And this was that paper that I was talking about for, that was from the celebrations. But I just want to give you guys the, the simple idea of how to do this. And then you guys can take it and run with it on all the paper that you have sitting around. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come in with my, since you guys love that I, or since you guys know that I love that old olive with this, since you've already seen with the other card that I made, and with this one with my old olive base, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna come in with old olive and find my chamois so I can clean my stamp off. And I think with this one, I'm going to come back over since I have a big enough area here. I think this is where I'm gonna come in with the sending healing hugs from our So Sentimental. This has also got that die set that you guys see me use all the stinking time. The Stitch So Sweetly, because it's my go-to, because those are some great labels. So what do you guys think of this uh, wood textured stuff? Does it kind of help with the glare? Because I'm not seeing, I mean, I can see it over here on my iPad, but you guys are seeing it from a different view than I am. So I'm just going to bring this down right here. Even pressure, there we go. Ooh, that turned out really good. I'm gonna glue this. Eh, my lid is glued. So I'm getting kind of excited. I have my in-person 
live class coming up on the 12th, which is next Wednesday, I think. Or no. Yeah, next Wednesday, because this Wednesday is the 5th. So on the 12th. So I'm kind of nervous and I'm kind of, I mean, I know that I'm super excited. I can't wait to be around a bunch of people and show them how awesome stamping is and actually get to, in, I mean, I get to interact with you guys on here, but it's not the same as showing somebody in person how to, you know, enjoy their, their stamps and just have fun with it. Okay, I'm going to use these again, and I'm going to use a big one up here because of the gold in this. I really want that gold to pop. Then I'm going to grab two of the medium size ones and maybe put them down. Oh, she's, I grabbed another big one. Did you guys see that? You guys were probably yelling at me. Stop. That was a big one. Okay. And doing that now we can grab some of our little leftover pieces that I cut off and decorate the insides of our cards. So like this piece can go right along the bottom here. And another great way to use up that paper is of course making our envelopes match our cards. So just like that, sending healing hugs don't know if you guys know anybody going through some, you know, times right now that, you know, you either know somebody who's sick or somebody who is kind of having some health issues. I know I have someone who has to have a surgery, so I plan on sending her a card. All right, and since I think we've got so much of that going on. I think I'm going to actually kind of, well, I don't know. I'm just going to do it this way. Is lighting doing okay today? I know they say if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Well, you guys know firsthand how the other day I moved everything around and it was a disaster. So now I've learned just keep things where they are besides doing this to my desk because that was something that I think needed to be improved with that glare that was off of there. Like even with taking pictures or anything like that, you would get that glare back behind my photos. glue smooge up there yep there we go all right so there is that one and the inside of our card here's the other one that we made and then here is the other one that I was going to take its paper right here and just again cut off a half inch piece And in this, I mean, black shows up on it, but I need to grab an inside, a card inside, an inside base. That was the word that I was looking for. And see, did you guys see how easy that was? I didn't have a card base laying here, but remember how I told you I take one of these cases, I cut up both colors, I do my very vanilla, and I do my basic white and I just have some handy when something like this, when I'm a space cadet and forget to cut myself an inside, then I know I have it right there when needed. So if any of you guys started watching that uh, show that I was talking about last week, that 
HBO special, HBO or Max or whatever the heck it's called. It's the app is called HBO Max, but it's called Mayor, Mayor of East Town. Oh my gosh. So yesterday being Sunday, they put out a new uh, episode. Oh my gosh. It's like every week I just want more. I know a lot of people were saying when it first came out that the first episode was really kind of slow and it turned them off and they thought that they couldn't watch it. But then things start getting good. And it's, it's one of those shows that's a train wreck because... Uh, what's her name? Kate, uh, Kate Winslet? Is it Kate Winslet that plays the main character? The girl from Titanic. I think her name is Kate Winslet. She's, she's the main character and she's kind of a train wreck, but she's kind of a good train wreck. She, she plays a detective and whoo, just saying it's a good show. If you have HBO Max, you need to watch it. All right, so that one I'm not gonna do anything with. I just wanted to show you. So here's the other one that I made just like this one, but I used the sending, sending healing hugs on this one, and then I did the happy birthday on the other one, and then put two little things like that, and then put that inside of there. I made another one of these. Oops, helps if I have it the right way. Jeez, just like that. And then I made another one of though these ones right here. But this one I did the happy birthday. And this one I did see I, I cut it up a little bit further. And then I did the sending healing hugs. So depending on how high you cut this up is how big of a stamp that you can put down here. So that is that. So let me make envelopes. That's what I was... My mind was going crazy. So I'm going to use for these two down here, I'm going to use my very vanilla since these things never get any love and they've been sitting here forever. I'm going to take my, that's not going to work. I need a two by six. So is this six? Ah, oh, yeah, that'll work or two and a half by six. I know that's a little bit longer than six, but it'll work. So one and two. Okay, and then the other one is this paper, right? Oh, there it is. I was gonna say, I know I had another piece of that. Right here. So move that, put that away. And then two and a half. All right. This one I'm going to use a a white card because we used a white insert in that. So let's get these done really quick. So if you guys don't have a demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. This is my host code for May right now. This is the host code. It's on my blog. Up on the right hand side, it says May host code. You can copy and paste that. Um, I did hear that they changed things around a bit in the Stampin' Up! store where this host code now goes at the top, not down at the bottom under your checkout button, just to let you know. I don't know. I don't. I don't shop as a customer for, customer for myself, so I'm not used to seeing what that quite looks like. But I did hear it from a couple of people. Also, the month of May is a great time to sign up for being a demonstrator yourself or a happy shopper. No judgment. A happy shopper means you get to reap the same benefits as a demonstrator or a business builder. You're just not going through the effort of building a business. You're simply doing it to save yourself some money on the discount. But with the month of May, if you sign up after May 4th, tomorrow, on or 
after May 4th, um, you get to spend $155 in product for only $99 on your starter kit. So that's a good time if you wanted the Baby Boss or you wanted the Big Boss, if you don't have a die cutting machine. Or you've been looking at some stamp sets and you, you know, would like to get a lot of product for $99 and then afterwards save yourself 20% on your product. That's the way to do it. We don't judge whether you want to make a business out of this or you just want to save yourself some money. So if you would like to know more about that, please get in touch with me and we can talk about all the good stuff that goes on with that. Also, part of joining my team is you get the awesomeness of my team leader who is really, really big in the Stampin' Up! world. Her name is Kelly Atchison. Um, she also collaborates with two other big demonstrators that have already hit their million dollar sales. So they're, they're quite, you know, quite big in Stampin' Up! land. So there's that one. I uh, should have turned one of those around to make the prettiness show, but that's still really pretty. I don't think anybody's going to complain. And then let me grab a white, ugh, this darn thing is stuck to everything. A white envelope. Let me get this package of envelopes open. I just had to buy more envelopes. So, um, my team leader collaborates with two other big name people in Stampin' Up! who have hit their million dollar sales and are a, a million dollar achievers. She, uh, the one is, uh, she's the one that has that stamp set, Pretty Perennials, in our catalog, the JJ Mini catalog, which is very sad because they didn't continue it over into the annual catalog, but what are you gonna do? It is what it is, I suppose. So maybe this one we might go this way. Mmm, what do we want? We want all that color? Sure, it's already there. I already got it before my glue dries. So yeah, it's a great time to sign up. You can then, after you join my team, um, you will get in on the, they have a website called Stamp Happy Academy, and they share a lot of PDFs. They share classes and all this kind of stuff that really help you is, as a demonstrator if you are making a business or if you just want to be a hobbyist. Um, then they show you lots of creative ideas and how to do things. Um, try to speak and do this at the same time. So yeah, so the month of May is a good time to sign up because typically you get $125 worth of product for the $99. You're going to get your um, order forms. You're going to get a pack of the new catalogs to share with your friends and family in case they want to order with you. Um, Again, like I said, if you don't want to sell and you just want to be a uh, discount shopper, you can always send customers my way. I always appreciate that. Also, we have our tips, tricks, and techniques cl uh, club. And the way you become part of that is you spend $30 a month in my online store. And for the month, I will send you the PDF I've also started adding a uh, YouTube video to that so you guys can actually see how the technique is done so you know how to use it right offhand. Alrighty, you guys. So those are our three cards that we have done today. I really wanted to show you guys some of these really neat folds and how that's done. Don't forget, this is retiring. So if you wanted to get your hands on that, you need to order that tonight. Also, I didn't use this, but these are the layer or ornate style, which are also disappearing as well. They're going to keep the ornate thanks. That's going to stay in there, which is a really cool set. So they all three of these things kind of coordinate together. Um, what else? Anything else? Nope. I think we're good. These, um, what are these? The big uh, daisies are going in the new catalog if you haven't seen those already. So that is staying around. That DSP, the ornate, goes with this. So that's another reason why I wanted to use this paper is to show, or DSP, is to show you how it coordinates with 
this stamp set, which I didn't use the stamp set, but you can see, I'm trying to get that piece of paper out of there. As you can see, it's very florally, just like the paper that we used. Oh, I can show you though, really quick, before I let you guys go for the night, I made a big card a while back, and there goes all my cards falling back behind my cupboard up there. Oh well. Look at this card. This is called a slimline card, and this is using that. So to show you how that, and then this is also retiring, I believe, as well. It's called the Ornate. It's really pretty. I know you guys have seen me use it before. Ah, da, 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 da. Where is it? Come on. Oh, right here. The Ornate Floral 3D. I believe... I believe that's retiring. I don't know if you were to find it on the Stampin' Up store, it would say retiring next to it if it is. But yeah, so what I did was I took this and I stamped it this way and then I flipped this and then I stamped it, or no, I didn't. I did it down here going this way and then I did it up here going the same way. And then I took some of that uh, shimmer paper and I stamped it on the shimmer paper. So I'm not sure if you can see that shimmer on that paper but then I don't have to worry about using wink or anything like that because my paper has already got that glitter all in it. And then I just used a little thin piece and this is Bumblebee. I used a thin piece of Bumblebee and ran that through the embossing folder and then just took my oval dies and did it like that. So kind of cool, it's a big slimline card and then did the inside and used this single flower right here and then also did that single flower right there. So just to kind of show you another idea using this whole kind of set, the other two parts of this set are going to continue over, but these are retiring your border, your ornate borders and your ornate style. So just to let you know. All right. If you guys need me for anything, please feel free to email me, message me on Facebook, and I can answer your questions for you. I hope you guys have a great week. And I hope you guys' weekend was good, too. We didn't kind of talk about weekends. I know mine has been kind of busy on the phone since, like I said, with Corbin being um, exposed to that. And he, he didn't get sick at all. But like I said, we had it in December. So they said that, not to say that you can't get reinfected, but it's very unlikely to get reinfected um, that close in proximity. So I don't know. I know we're all doing fine. We didn't get anything. And, uh, but the health department has been calling me from our city, Pima County, our county here, has been calling me daily, finding out how he's doing and how to keep him safe. And da da da. -da. I mean, it's redundant because they just say the same things over and over again. I know they're doing their job and they're sweet as can be. And I, you know, I appreciate what they're doing. But, it's just one of those things where I'm like, all right, come on. I know, I know the song and dance. We're, we're all good. <laughs> so anyways, you guys be safe out there. Take care of yourselves and be kind to one another. And I will see you guys on Thursday, the 6th at 6 p.m. Um, we will have our catalog kickoff. And I guess that's it for now. All right. I will see you soon. Bye.